Joining us now to talk more about Morin's case is Randolph Rice, the attorney for Rachel's mother, Patty Morin. Uh, Randolph, I appreciate you being here, and I know this was very emotional, this hearing for Rachel's family. Uh, this was the first time uh, that they saw her alleged killer in real time. Tell me how they're holding up, uh, and I understand that Rachel's daughters are still asking uh, for their mom. They're asking where she is. They just don't understand. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So it was an incredibly emotional uh, hearing this past Friday. This was the first time that the Morton family had a chance to see the suspect, at least face to face, not on a television screen. Although it was by television, it was by Zoom, it was him looking at the camera. And as you indicated, he was very solemn. He didn't have any emotion on his face. He sat there and left, listened to the charges being read to him, the maximum penalties, all being done through a Spanish interpreter. You know, I, I know that new details were also revealed here, including that the killer subjected Rachel to 10 to 15 strikes to the skull. Uh, what information are we learning? Sure. So during that hearing, the state's attorney's office revealed some new information. The first being is that she was attacked on the trail and she was dragged from the trail to the uh, culvert where they found her underneath the Bel Air bypass. She died, manner of death, we didn't know specifically, which is uh, blood force trauma and strangulation, and that she received between 10 and 15 strikes or wounds to the head. Uh, she was obviously uh, sexually assaulted, and that's, that's why she, the suspect is charged with first and second degree rape. He's also charged with first and second degree murder. The rape and the murder counts, the top counts there, carry up to life in prison in Maryland. It's just horrifying what happened to her. Uh, did the suspect appear remorseful in your eyes and in the family's eyes? No, he didn't. He seemed to be just staring straight forward. He'd obviously had representation by the public defender's office in Maryland. They had probably had prepped him because at some point, Judge Miller asked if he would wish to speak, uh, and the defendant refused to speak uh, to, the, to the courtroom and to the court. And you say Rachel's murder was completely preventable. Uh, tell me more about that. Sure, this is a preventable murder. If the Democrats and Republicans and President Biden would just shut down the border, this would not have happened. Obviously, this individual tried three times to come across. He ultimately made it across on the fourth time from reports. But had this, as this, at this, was we, this stream of individuals and people coming across the border, this continues to happen in America. We had the attack from an Ecuadorian man in New York on a 13-year-old, and then most recently this past weekend or this past uh, end of the week. There was a 12-year-old who was murdered by two individuals who crossed over the border, were actually stopped by ICE, but let into the country. So we continue to have illegal immigrants coming into this country and causing um, these crimes. As Martinez Hernandez was fleeing El Salvador uh, for murder there, he likely had to cross through Mexico, and that is a nation we know. Around 10 women and girls are murdered every single day. Uh, you know, the impunity rate is higher than 95 percent. Do you think it's possible that there are other murder victims we don't know about? I do, and here's why. Because there's a time frame between when he comes over and he arrives in March in um, Los Angeles and commits the crime, and then ultimately he comes down to Maryland. There's a gap there between March and August when, he, when, he, when he's a suspect in killing Rachel. And then between August and his capture uh, just over a week ago, ultimately, that those are periods of times that he should be accounted for. We don't know what he's been doing. So, um, you know, I, can't, I think investigators are going to continue to look and continue to work on this investigation. We need the timeline to figure out what's going on with this individual in those time frames. All right, Randolph Rice, appreciate your time on this. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.